<clears throat> okay, so again, good evening to everyone. Uh, our uh, our topic for today will be those coming from the last two weeks. So I just intend to give the highlights of, of the lecture. Okay, so for week number nine, where we will talk about the load flow for regional networks, so for distribution networks. And then for week 10, uh, we'll talk about the models uh, that we will use or the modeling of transmission and distribution lines. Okay. So, so far, the, the load flow method that we have uh, discussed uh, is valid or can be used for any network. It can be used for um, distribution and transmission networks, okay? However, for distribution networks that are regional in configuration, uh, sometimes uh, using, say, the Gaussian method um, is, is more tedious, okay? And what I will present to you is uh, is a straightforward way of solving uh, the load flow for a regional network. And that's uh, that's also iterative in nature. And it's called the backward forward sweep method, okay? So some of you might have already encountered this. Okay, so anyway, for those who haven't, uh, the equations that you will see are familiar because uh, the, 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 the method is uh, entirely based on and K. So again, for uh, distribution networks, uh, its main characteristic is that it's a regional in nature, okay? So when we say regional in nature, uh, we do not form a loop. There's no, no loop, there's no loop uh, like this one, okay? So usually we have a substation here and then we have main feeders coming out from that main substation and then there are laterals, okay? And so on and so forth. However, uh, if you look at the network, you will not see for me. So again, the definition of a loop is that um, it, it is a, a path that starts from a node and also ends at the same node. Okay. So here we clearly do not have uh, a loop. Okay. So the method that we can use to, to solve for the voltage in a distribution network is to use the backward forward sweep. Okay. So uh, the back we um, it's an iterative process. We will start with the backward sweep. And the backward sweep is usually involved with the computation of the currents, okay? So the backward sweep in that, um, in, in that part of the solution, we are solving for the currents. And then for the forward sweep, we are solving for the voltage, okay? So it's, it's a, a pretty straightforward process, okay? Now, in the materials that I gave to you at the Uble, Okay, so I, I have here a study guide. Okay, I'll just open it. Okay, so I also gave to you the, <clears throat> the, the procedure for the backward forward sweep. Here it is. Okay, so essentially uh, it will involve initialization, just like in Newton Raphson load flow or go side the load flow, you will initialize all voltages uh, to be equal to one. Okay, and then we will iterate. Okay, now. Um, instead of using the slides, I think it, I'll just use this, you know, the, the study guide that I gave you, okay? And uh, take note that the, the method, um, I, I, uh, the, the backward-forward sweep method, I will just use this simple network, okay? And then once we, uh, once we understand how the backward-forward sweep works for a particular network, then it's, it's relatively easy to, to, to extend uh, the solution to a more complex uh, regional network, okay? So, so the procedure here is the first step is we will initialize all the vo node voltages, okay? So for this particular network, what we know here are uh, the line impedances, okay? So Z1, 2, Z2, 3, Z3, 4, Z4, 5, all of those are given, okay? Vs is also given, okay? So that is uh, usually one angle zero, that's the substation and the voltage is regulated at that point, okay? Uh, the other given values are the, the complex power that are drawn by the load. So S1, 2, uh, sorry, S2, S3, S4, and S5. So we know the values of all those S's, and we also know the value of all those Z's. Okay? So for the backward sweep, the first step is to compute for the currents. Okay? So meaning, uh, given S5 and the voltage V5, which we assume to be one angle zero, uh, we will compute for I5 and we will just use this expression, okay? 
So the current is equal to S conjugate over V conjugate, okay? We are essentially using the expression S is equal to V times I conjugate, okay? So when you solve for I, it's just equal to S conjugate over V conjugate, okay? So in the figure above, I5 is equal to S5 divided by S5 conjugate over V5 conjugate. Similarly, we can solve for I4, okay? Similarly, we can solve for I4 and I4 is equal to S4 conjugate over V4 conjugate. By the way, V4 here is the voltage here with respect to uh, this one, okay? To this node. V5 is the voltage here with respect to this node, okay? And then V3 is the voltage here with respect to that node. So using the same formula, that current I3 is uh, equal to uh, S3, S3 divided by V3 or S3 conjugate over V3 conjugate, okay? So at this point, we already know or we have an estimate of the currents drawn by the loads. And then the next step is to solve for all currents using KCL. That is, that current I4, 5 is equal to I5, okay? And then this current I3, 4 is equal to I4 plus I4, 5. And then that current I2, 3 is equal to I3 plus I3, 4. And then that current I2 is equal to, I1, 2 is equal to I2 plus I2, 3, okay? So essentially that's the backward sweep. We are solving for all the currents in the network, okay? So that's the first half of the algorithm. The second half is the forward sweep. And the forward sweep involves uh, solving for the voltages using KVL, okay? Now, the backward sweep, take note that we started the computation at the node that is farthest from the uh, substation. So we started here and then we, will, we work all our way back to Vs, okay? So we start here and then we computed for the currents one after the other until we were able to get I12, okay? But for the forward sweep, we will start here and we will work all our way down until V5, okay? <clears throat> Take note that this voltage is known, so we can solve for an expression for V2, okay? And that's using KVL. And uh, we will just use this expression. So V2, V2 here, that voltage there is equal to Vs, minus I12 times Z12, okay? So now we have a value for V2. Take note that the original value here of V2 is one angle zero. That's the, that's the initialization, diba? Right? But after the forward sweep, we are now getting new values for V2, okay? Now, once we have V2, we can now solve for V3, again, by KVL using this expression. That is, uh, V3 is equal to V2 minus Z23, I23. And then V4, V4 is equal to V3 minus I34, Z34. Okay? And then uh, V5 is equal to V4 minus Z, I, 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 Z45, I45. Okay? So after that, that uh, forward sweep, we now have new values for the node voltages. And then using those new voltages, we will recompute I2, I3, I4, and I5, and then we will uh, solve for the currents all over again using KCL, okay? Once after, uh, after we solve for the KCL, all the currents using KCL, okay, we start at the substation again, and then we will solve for all the voltage using KVL, okay, using these equations, okay? So take note, iterative yung solution natin. Uh, after, after going through the forward sweep, we are getting new voltages, V2, V3, and V4, and we just have to compute, or we have just have to compare them from the previous values, okay? So we just compare them from the previous, previous values, and then once we have noticed that the values are no longer changing, it means that the solution has converged, okay? So mathematically, it means that uh, solve for the difference between the previous values of Vs and the new values, okay? So you, you compare the new value of V5 with the old value, the new value of V4 with the old value, and so on and so forth. And then you choose the biggest uh, change, the biggest increment, okay? And then at each iteration, you just have to compare them to a pre-selected tolerance, okay? And once uh, the increment 
uh, the largest increment is smaller than the pre-selected tolerance, then uh, the solution has converged. Okay? So the, the, the backward-forward sweep is that simple. It's just a direct application of KCL and KVL. Okay? So uh, to learn more about it, uh, you have here a YouTube video that you could watch. Um, and then uh, I also pasted uh, uh, a book chapter, okay? a book chapter at the Uvle that you could read. Ito yon, this one, it's a distribution feeder analysis. And then I also uploaded uh, this set of slides. Okay. So uh, very quickly using the equation or using the example here in this um, in this uh, slide deck, let us apply the backward-forward sweep. Ano? Okay, so uh, this is a simple network. Okay, so we have here the, the utility grid and the voltage here is fixed. Let's say it's one angle zero, and then we know the value of this impedance, this impedance and that impedance, and then this load here is drawing say 0 0.085 plus J 0 0.05267 per unit. So this is the real power, this is the reactive power, okay? And then here, uh, this load naman is drawing 0 0.17 plus J 0 0.10536 per unit. <coughs> Sorry, this is real power and that's reactive power, okay? So again, the first step is to initialize all voltages. So the voltage here, well, we, we know the value of that. It's one angle zero, okay, one plus J zero. We initialize the voltage here as one angle zero. We initialize the voltage there as one angle zero, and then the voltage here as one angle zero. Okay, now we will start with the backward sweep. So again, for the backward sweep, we will compute for all currents, okay? So it means that the current going down here, okay, the current going down here, you can solve for that, okay? It's equal to S conjugate, the conjugate of this, divided by V conjugate, okay? So on the next slide, okay? This current going down here is equal to S4 conjugate divided by V4 conjugate. That's the current going down there. The current going down here is equal to the conjugate of that divided by V3 conjugate, okay? And then by KCL, the current going to the right in this branch is equal to the current going down here. And then the current going to the right here is also the current going down here. Okay. And then once we reach this node, we will perform another KCL. That is the current from bus one to bus two or the current going to the right, the current going that way is just equal to the current here plus the current there. Okay, okay, class. Okay, so that's that's on the next slide. Okay, it's on the next slide. That is uh, I24, I24, the current from here to there is just equal to I4. Okay, the current to the right is just equal to the current here. And then the current to the right is just equal to the current here, that one, okay? And then the current here from bus one to bus two, and that's I12, is just equal to I23 plus I24. This current plus that current, okay? Now, if you happen to have a load here, then you have to compute for the current going through that load, okay? And the current going down that load is equal to S2 conjugate over V2 conjugate. However, in our example, we do not have a load here. Hence, the load current is zero. Okay, that's the reason why you have a zero there. Okay, so that's the first pass. We have computed all currents. So once we already know the currents, then we can now solve for all voltages and we will start at bus one. Okay, the voltage here is one angle zero. And then V2, the voltage here is equal to V1 minus this impedance multiplied by the current going to the right, which is this current here. Okay, whatever that value. Okay. So at home, maybe later you can solve, you can solve for the values, okay? Um, if, if we're having a face-to-face -face class, um, I'll ask you to compute the values and then I'll ask you to fill in the blanks, okay? However, I trust that, that you can do that at home, okay? So at this point, we already solve for V2 and then, and then um, we now solve for V3, 
and V3 is equal to V2 minus the current going down times that impedance, and then V4, this voltage here, is equal to V2 minus that impedance times uh, the current going to the right. Okay, so at this point, we already have a new set of voltages, okay? Now, using those new set of voltages, you use those new voltages to compute for the currents, the new currents. And then, once you have the new current for I4 and I3, KCL uli, and then once you have the new bus voltages, uh, the, the, the new currents, uh, use those currents to solve for KVL, okay? So that's uh, a quick... Uh, a quick discussion on the backward forward sweep. Okay, any questions, guys? Any questions? Straightforward lang, ano? Okay. So, again, uh, please go through the, 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 the YouTube uh, video that, that I've shown, uh, that I posted here. Okay. Uh, it's not here, you know, it's on the study guide. The, the link to the YouTube channel is on the study guide. Uh, it's there. Okay. And then I already, I also provided uh, a book chapter, okay? Uh, this one. Questions? Questions, folks? Wala? Okay, because uh, if there are no more questions, I'll proceed to the, uh, to the next um, week, week 11. And for week 11, no, not week 11, week 10, okay? Uh, we will talk about uh, transmission line uh, models, okay? And here at week 10, I uploaded, well, not a study guide, no, but uh, a summary of line models, okay? So it's a, it's a Word document. It's a Word document. And then um, I pasted here the, the important equations uh, that are in the slide deck, okay? So in the slide deck, Medyo mahaba yung slide deck natin, ano, because it involves a lot of derivations, okay? But for this evening, I, I will not go to the derivation, but I'll go straight to the equations and how to apply those equations. I think that's the most important part naman, ano, okay? For example, when we are um, doing the load flow, okay? When we have that, no, that network, uh, maybe I think I have to go back to this one, Okay? That line already has an impedance, okay? We already know the R and then the X. It's already given, okay? But the question is, if you're given a distribution line or a transmission line, how do you really compute for these values, okay? Where did that 0 0.0075 came from? Where did that 0 0.0915 came from, okay? Where do these values came from, okay? And that's what we're going to do uh, for week 10, okay? And in fact, the equations are already here, okay? So for example, uh, if you have a, a three-phase line, okay, if you have a three-phase line, how come the three-phase line is only represented by a single impedance, okay? Okay, so I will elaborate on that later, okay? Now, um, I will just use this document um, to... Um, to uh, may nag chat, -chat. Ah, okay sige thank you <clears throat> okay um, I will just use this document to to um, to facilitate the discussion instead of using the slides ano okay kasi nandito na yung equations eh okay now <coughs> the first set of uh, of important equations is this one um, where will we see that equation? Okay. Uh, by the way, at the UVLE, at the UVLE, um, I already uploaded there uh, a couple of slide deck. Ito. This slide deck here, that's uh, uh, series impedance and then shunt reactance. Okay. So, malamang din yung panakikita yan, ano? kasi kaka-upload ko lang kaninang alas ko yan. Okay. So ito yung for the series, impedance, and then for the shunt admittance, uh, we have this, okay? Anyway, um, I, will, uh, um, I will just go straight to the most important equations. I will no longer go through uh, the derivations, okay? So the first important equation 
for the series impedance, uh, you will see that here in slide, um, uh, this slide here, okay? And uh, anong slide ba to? Hindi na nakalagay. Anyway, I'll just use uh, the PowerPoint, okay? Uh, the first important equation that we will see is uh, the series impedance of a, of a three-phase line, which is, which is um, uh, this one here, okay? This one here, okay? So going back to the, to the, uh, to the summary of equations, okay? Uh, we will use do this uh, this picture as a reference, okay? So I A I B and I C. These are the currents that are going through the three lines, okay? So take note: we have a three-phase transmission line. I A I B and I C are the three-phase currents, okay? So let us assume that the other end of the line, uh, denoted by A prime, B prime, and C prime, let us assume that all of them are connected to ground, okay? So they're connected to ground, okay? So when we inject these three currents, I, A, I, B, and I, C, we will observe three voltages here with respect to ground. So when we say ground, I'm literally referring to ground, the earth. I'm referring to lupa, okay? So V, A here, the voltage from that point to ground. V, B is the voltage from that point to ground. And V, C is the voltage from that point to ground. However, the other end of the line is also connected to ground. So it means that that VA that you see here is the voltage drop from A to A prime. It is the voltage drop along the line. Okay? Okay, class? <laughs> Similarly, VB is the voltage drop along the line and VC is the voltage drop along the line. Okay? And the relationship between the line currents and the voltage drops, okay? So VA, VP, and VC are voltage drops is given by that expression, okay? So take note that we will multiply a three by three impedance matrix to the line currents to get the voltages, okay? It means that the voltage VA, there is a voltage drop here that is caused by IA. That's obvious naman, di ba? This current will cause a voltage drop along that, uh, along that line, okay? But this expression also tells us that this current here, IB, is also producing a voltage drop here. Similarly, that current IC will produce a voltage drop here, okay? So the currents that are flowing at the other phases is producing or are producing voltage drops on a line, on, 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 on the same line, okay? And the main reason for that is mutual inductance or mutual impedance, okay? So kumbaga, meron transformer effect. Okay, so if you have two lines that are parallel, okay, a current flowing through one line will cause a voltage drop on the other line. Okay, and that's because of the mutual impedance between the two lines. In particular, the mutual inductance between the two lines. Okay? Now, uh, the derivation is shown here. I, I'm not, uh, no, no, not that one. It's, it's, it's the other slide deck. Uh, this one, okay? I, I will no longer go through all of this tedious derivation, ano, kasi I think the, the most important naman is how do we apply this expression, okay? How do we derive that three by three matrix, okay? Now, <clears throat> we'll focus on that, on, on the three by three matrix. So for this three by three matrix, take note that we have diagonal elements, <coughs> uh, ZAA, ZBB, and ZCC, and then we have off diagonal elements, okay? So the diagonal elements is given by this expression here, okay? Uh, take note that uh, we have uh, several variables. Um, para clear, no? I'll just go back to the document because those variables are already uh, uh, described here at the bottom. So we have the diagonal elements, ZAA, ZBB, and ZCC. So ZAA equal to ZBB equal to ZCC is equal to RA plus RD plus J omega K L N D E over DS, okay? And the units for this is volts per unit length or volts per kilometer, okay? So the units of all 
impedances here is ohms per kilometer. Okay? So, <clears throat> RA here is the resistance of the cable, of this cable itself. So, how do we get or well, where, where will we get the resistance of the cable? Well, we can get that from uh, the spec sheet of the cable. So, for example, here, okay? So, if you are using a, a mole or, or a squirrel or a gopher type of cable, then the resistance is, um, is this one, okay? It's the DC resistance at 20 degrees Celsius, ohms per kilometer. So, this last column here is RA, okay? Now, you may be wondering, sir, that that's the DC resistance. However, at 60 hertz, the AC resistance is very close to the DC resistance, okay? So the AC resistance will deviate from the DC resistance at very high frequencies. But at DC, or at 60 hertz rather, it's a, it's a relatively low, fre low frequency, uh, the AC resistance is uh, almost the same as the DC resistance. So the last column here is your RA, okay? Next. Um, okay, so we already have RA. How about RD? Well, RD, that is the earth resistance, okay? The resistance of the lupa, of the ground, of earth, okay? And uh, you don't have to worry about that because that RD is given. It's 0 0.059214 ohms per kilometer at 60 hertz. It's a constant. You don't have to worry about that, okay? So when you are uh, solving for the real component, you just have to look at the uh, characteristics of the cable, look for its DC resistance in ohms per kilometer, and that's what you'll put here. And then you add to that the resistance of the earth, okay? And you have the real component, okay? Now, how about the reactance? So you have here another uh, constant, omega k, and omega k is just 7.54 times 10 to the negative 5 ohms per meter. Or if, you're go, if you are using ohms per kilometer as the unit, then that's, that would be 0 0.0075 no, ohms per kilometer. Okay? So in fact, um, yung source of error lang naman dito is consistency in, in, in the units. So if this is in ohms per kilometer, then just make sure that this is also in ohms per kilometer. Okay? So take note here that RD is specified in... Uh, ohms per kilometer, okay? So it means that RA, you should also get the value in ohms per kilometer, okay? And then for omega k here, it should be also in ohms per kilometer, okay? Now, how about uh, these two values here? You have an L and B over DS. Well, B, it's just another constant. Its value is 850 meters for average damp earth, okay? And DS is the geometric mean radius or the GMR of the conductor. And how do you get that? Well, you go back to the conductor specifications like this one, okay? So for example, this cable here, the GMR is this one. However, uh, it's using US units, ano? Um, feet. So you have to convert that into, say, meters, okay? Kasi yung denominator natin dito sa expression natin, okay? This is in meters, so that should be in meters as well. Okay, so you have to be careful. If that is in feet, then that should be in feet. If that is in centimeters, then that should be in centimeters. Okay? So, so this is the geometric mean radius of the conductor, and you just have to look for that at the, uh, at the spec sheet of the conductor. Okay? Here, unfortunately, you do not have the geometric mean radius of the conductor, but you are given the diameter. Okay? Um, um, sige, maybe I'll answer some of the questions at the chat. Uh, before I answer that, ano, puro private. I-public nyo na yung mga tanong ninyo, guys, para makita ng iba, ha? Okay? Um, I'll, be, I'll be typing sa chat box natin, ano? Um, so if you're given the diameter, how do you get the GMR? Okay? So the GMR is equal to the radius are raised to the, okay, multiplied by E raised to the negative one-fourth, okay? There, okay? So if you do not have the 
the GMR of the conductor, you just have to get the radius of the conductor. Uh, for the radius, you could get it here. It's the, the, the diameter is given. Okay, the diameter is given. Hence, uh, you just multiply it by e to the negative one four, and then you will get the GMR. Okay. Now, for the skin effect, uh, not much effect. Uh, again, sixty hertz is relatively low, low frequency, so we, we we will not we're not going to worry about uh, skin effect. Okay, and that 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 answer is for Emma. Okay. <clears throat> so now let us uh, proceed to the example, uh, to the formula. So we have R A plus R D. Again, R A you could get that from the spec sheet of the conductor. R D it's a given. It's 0 0.059214 ohms per kilometer. Omega k, it's another constant, 7.54 times 10 to the minus 5 ohms per meter. D is another constant, 850 meters. And Ds is the GMR of the conductor. Okay? Now, uh, meron tayong clause dito, no? Na yung D is 850 meters for average damp earth. Um, if we are working at a different environment, let's say uh, here, uh, saan si DE natin, okay? This one, okay? So if the cable is uh, above water, then the DE that we will use is 8.5 to 85 meters, okay? But since uh, we are assuming that the cable, that the transmission line is over average damp earth, we are using 850 meters. The number here inside the parenthesis is in meters. Outside the parenthesis, it's in feet. So it's 2790 feet or 850 meters, okay? If the transmission line is over dry earth, then we will use 2688 meters. If, if the transmission line is above swampy ground, then the number that we will use is anywhere between 269 to 850. However, for um, since we do not know, um, we will just uh, by default uh, use 850 for Okay? Now, that is the um, expression for the, this thing here is the expression for the diagonal elements. ZAA is equal to ZBB equal to ZCC. <coughs> now, how about the off diagonal elements? ZAB, ZAC, and ZBC. This is the expression that we would use. Okay? The real component is RD. It's equal to the earth resistance. However, for the imaginary component, you still have J omega K. Again, omega K is 7.54 times 10 to the minus 5. LN of DE over DXY. DE still your 850 meters, but DXY is the separation between the conductors. Meaning, if you are solving for ZAB here, ZAB, then you have to solve for the separation, the distance between conductor A and conductor B. Okay? For ZAC, it means that uh, you have to solve for the separation between conductor A and conductor C. And similarly, uh, for ZBC, you have to solve for the separation between conductor B and conductor C, okay? I think the best way to proceed at this point is through, a, through an example like this one, okay? In here, uh, we have a 69 kV line, okay? And the line is 60 kilometers long. And, uh, and the line uh, is this, uh, no? it's, a, it's a three phase cable, uh, phase A, phase B, and phase C. Okay? And the separation between uh, A and B is three and a half meters, and the separation between B and C is another three and a half meters. It means that cable A and cable C are seven meters from each other. Okay? And then for the cable that, that is used, it's four slash zero hard drawn copper. Okay? Uh, the resistance is 0.173 ohms per kilometer. And uh, this is another given, that's the GMR of the conductor. Okay, 0 0.00508 meters or about five millimeters, 5.08 millimeters. That's the geometric mean radius of that particular conductor. Okay, so our uh, objective is to solve for the three by three impedance matrix. Okay, so to solve for that matrix, 
we will apply this expression for the diagonal elements and we will apply that expression for the off diagonal elements okay so let's do that so for the diagonal elements <coughs> ZAA is equal to ZBB equal to ZCC is equal to RA plus RD plus J omega K ln B over DS. RA, that's the resistance of the cable. Ito yon, 0.173 ohms per kilometer. Okay? RD is the resistance of the ground. And that's 0.059. Uh, I think there are more digits to that. 0 0.059 214 ohms per kilometer. So dito nilagay lang natin yung 0.059. Okay? Plus J, 0 0.0754 ohms per kilometer. Okay? That's our omega KS. Okay? It's in ohms per kilometer. Okay? This is 7.54 times 10 to the minus 5 ohms per meter. So if you convert that into ohms per kilometer, it will be 0 0.0754 ohms per kilometer. Okay? LN of DE, which is 850, over DS. That's the GMR. Okay? So let's evaluate that, and this is what we will get. 0 0.232 plus J, 0 0.907 ohms per kilometer. Okay? So since the line is 60 kilometers long, then you just have to multiply this thing here by 60 to get the total impedance. Okay? Any questions, guys? Any questions? Okay. So pag may ano question, just interrupt me. Okay. Now, uh, when you multiply this by 60, this is what we will get. Okay. Now, how about the off-diagonals? So for the off-diagonals, we see here that the separation from A to B is the same from the separation between B and C. So hindi sabihin, when we apply, uh, when we apply this expression here, we will get the same real component. This is 0 .0, uh, 0 0.0754. Uh, this is 850. Ito naman yung 3.5 meters. Okay? So, um, <clears throat> ZAB is equal to ZBC is equal to RD, 0 0.059 ohms per kilometer, plus J omega K, LN, DE over 3.5 meters, which is that or this, okay? And that's the AB and ZBC. For ZAC, okay, we're now uh, getting the impedance uh, between or the mutual impedance between A and C. The separation between them is 7 meters. So when we apply this expression, this thing here, this will be 7. Everything else is the same, okay? Uh, ZD, uh, so RD is 0 0.059 plus J omega K ln DE over the 7 meter separation. And this is what we would get, okay? So multiply ZAB and or ZBC by 60 kilometers. This is what we will get. Multiply ZAC by 60 kilometers and this is what we will get. Hence, for this network here, okay, for this network, okay, this is the expression for the voltage drop. And IA, IB, and IC are the line currents. Any questions, guys? Okay. So simply lang siya, no? Straightforward. We just have to use these two expressions here, okay? We just have to look for that. Do a spec sheet ng cable. This, do a spec sheet ng cable. Okay, that's the cable resistance. That's the GMR of the cable. Dito naman, so of diagonal elements, you just have to look at how the cables are arranged dun sa poste. And you just have to solve for the separation. Okay, so kailangan, kailangan natin ng counting geometry lang dito. Okay, folks? Okay. So, uh, this In this example here, uh, we are dealing with a transmission line that do not have a ground wire, okay? So what if the cable has a ground wire, like this cable here, okay? So ito yung ating phase A, phase B, and phase C cable, and then we have a smaller cable on top. That's the ground wire, 
okay? So that's also used to divert lightning, okay? So on stormy weather, that's the cable that will be hit by lightning, and then the, the energy from the lightning will be diverted directly to ground. So instead of having those three cables hit by lightning, uh, we are having that ground wire on top, okay? So if we have that ground wire, how will the expressions change, okay? Now, um, take note that in our previous um, case, like this one, we are building a three by three matrix, okay? Now, since we have a fourth cable, we will now write a four by four matrix, like so, okay? Kanina, kanina it's just three by three. We have B, A, B, 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 C, I, A, I, B, I, C. But since we already have a fourth cable, we will have a VW, which is the voltage drop along the ground wire, which is zero. And then IW, it's the current on the ground wire, which we do not know, okay? Now, uh, the procedure is we will still build this four by four matrix and we will still use the same expression, okay? So for the diagonal elements, okay, the diagonal elements, we have RA or RX, where, where X here is the, either A, B, C, or W. Take note that usually we are using a, a smaller cable for the ground wire. Okay, so hilig sabihin, uh, the value of ZWW will be different from Z, A, A, Z, B, B, and Z, C, C. Since the three cables are usually identical, then those, those three will have the same values. However, the ground wire is usually smaller, so this value will be different from that, from those values there, okay? So ZXX, is equal to the resistance of the cable plus RD, the earth resistance, plus J omega K L N B E over the GMR of the conductor, okay? So again, these three cables, they are identical, A, B, and C, so they have the same GMR. However, the fourth conductor is smaller, so you would have a smaller GMR, okay? So we will fill it up, the diagonal elements, we will compute. How about the off-diagonals? Same thing, okay? A little bit of geometry, you have to compute for dxy. And dxy is all possible combinations. A, B, A, C, A, W, B, C, B, W, C, W. Okay? So, now that we have this matrix, a 4 by 4 matrix, V, A, V, B, V, C, I, A, I, B, I, C, and I, W, this one is zero, we essentially have a matrix that looks like that. Okay? This is VA, VB, VC, and that's the VW. This is the three by three matrix, three by one, one by three, and then this is your one by one. I1 here is IA, IB, IC, and then I2 is the current through the ground wire, okay? Now, we can rewrite this expression or we can eliminate actually I2 using Cron reduction, okay? In fact, um, using Cron reduction, we will now have this expression here, wherein V1, that's your V1, equal to this matrix here, multiplied by I1. We essentially eliminated I2, okay? Now, this three by three matrix is solved using this matrices here. That's equal to Z1, that's Z1, minus Z2 times Z4 inverse times Z3, okay? So the elimination of the last row is what we call the cron reduction. So if you're taking up E251, maybe you have encountered the, the cron reduction, okay? So let, let's have an example, okay? I think that's the best way to proceed. Let's have an example, um, this one, okay? So we, all, we have the original configuration, <coughs> AB, uh, three conductors separated by 3.5 meters, However, on top of conductor B, five meters on top of it, we have a ground wire. And for the ground wire, we are using a smaller conductor. That is, it will have a smaller GMR, 0 0.0035 meters, okay? Uh, a little even smaller than, than three millimeter, uh, one millimeter, okay? One third of a millimeter, yung GMR niya. And the resistance is three ohms per kilometer. Take note that it's a smaller conductor, hence it has a higher resistance per unit length, okay? Now, 
let us now populate the 4 by 4 uh, matrix. Well, to do that, um, Z1 is already computed for us, okay? Because uh, Z1 only involves uh, conductors A, B, and C, and this Z1 here is yung same Z1 na nakuha natin dito. This one, dun sa unang example natin. We just have to solve for all terms involving the ground wire. And we will start with uh, ZWW here, okay? So for ZWW, we will use this expression. So we have the RW, yung 3 ohms per kilometer plus RD plus J omega K ln BE over the GMR of that ground wire, which is this value here, okay? Expression. So RW plus RD plus J omega K ln BE over uh, the GMR of the conductor or given by that expression. Multiply that by 60 kilometers. This is what we will get for ZWW. Okay? Next, we will solve for, we will solve for uh, this value here, that value there, and that value that there. And take note that these three values, you transpose them, ito din lang yon. Okay? To get ZAW, we will use this. So we still have RD, J omega K, or other constant, L and D over the XY. So we just have to solve for the XY. Or the distance between conductor A from conductor W. And then for ZBW, we just need the separation between conductor B and conductor W. And then for ZCW, well, uh, by symmetry, it's also equal to ZAW. Okay? Bakit by symmetry? Well, this distance here is also the same as that distance, okay? So you can solve that using the Pythagorean theorem, okay? So uh, ZAW is solved here. It's equal to ZCW. Again, it's equal to RD plus J omega K L and D over DAW. So the DAW is 6.1 meters. Yung 6.1 na yon, yung distance na to, or at yung distance na to, okay? And that's the W and ZCW. How about ZBW? It's equal to RB plus J omega K LN DE over the distance between conductor B and conductor W. And that is your five meters here. Okay, guys? Okay? So, we already have, uh, we already have this matrix here. We already have this. We already have that. Now we can solve for the three by three matrix that relates VABC to IABC using Cron reduction. And this is what we will get, okay? So we have the four by four and then we simply eliminated the last row and the last column using Cron reduction. Any questions guys? Okay. Okay, so you could just uh, go back to the to the examples here uh, at the at the slides. Okay, now, <clears throat> so at this point we are uh, we are solving for these three by three matrices. Okay, however, in your machine problems, the the impedances are just uh, a resistance and a, a reactance. Where did those values came from? Well, we compute them from the impedance, from this three by three impedance matrix, okay? Take note that this three by three impedance matrix uh, relates the ABC voltages to the, the ABC voltages to the ABC currents, okay? Now, since in, in the power system, we are assuming that, that the voltages and the currents or, or the system is balanced, okay? And if you have a balanced system, it means that we do not have the negative sequence and the zero sequence components. In fact, we are just interested on the positive sequence current, the positive sequence voltage, and those two are related using the positive sequence impedance. In fact, that, that impedance, that in single impedance value is the positive sequence impedance, okay? Now, how do we get the positive sequence impedance from the three by three matrix? 
Um, again, guys, there is a derivation here, no? but I will no longer go through the derivation. I'll just, I'll just go straight to the result. Okay? I'll just go straight to the result. Um, kasi hahaba pa tayo eh. Okay? Oh, no, that's not the result. Okay. The result is... Um, here, okay? <clears throat> no, not that one, sorry. Uh, the result is here, okay? <clears throat> uh, this thing here is the zero sequence impedance. That's zero, one, two, okay? Uh, what's that matrix? Uh, this one, wait, sorry guys, uh, I'm looking. I'm looking for the right equation uh, to describe here, okay? This is the positive sequence voltage, sorry, zero sequence voltage, positive sequence voltage, negative sequence voltage, positive sequence current, negative, sorry, zero sequence current, positive sequence current, and negative sequence current, okay? So, so this is the impedance matrix, and that's the zero sequence impedance, positive sequence impedance, and the negative sequence impedance, okay? So the zero sequence voltage is equal to the zero sequence current multiplied by the zero sequence impedance. Similarly, the positive sequence voltage is equal to the positive sequence current multiplied by the positive sequence impedance. And finally, the negative sequence voltage is equal to the negative sequence current multiplied by the negative sequence impedance. And our expression for the positive sequence impedance, we are just interested in that thing, is equal to this expression, okay? So you see that uh, we are looking at a familiar equation. RA is still the resistance of the cable. You still have the J omega K, a constant, and then you still have a DS, the GMR. But you have another term here, dm. And dm is just the geometric mean distance between the cables. Okay? So you have the three cables. You get the, the, the distances between them. So you have three distances. You just get the geometric mean of that. And that is your dm. Okay? Now, another expression for the positive sequence impedance is... Um, um, this thing, nasa na yon? Um, wait lang, folks. I'm just looking for the right expression. The positive sequence impedance is also equal to Zs is equal minus Zm, okay? Where Zs is just the average of all diagonal elements and Zm is just the average of all of diagonal elements, okay? And the positive sequence impedance is equal to Zs minus Zm. Okay? Um, I think the best way to, to, to demonstrate is through an example, like this one. Okay? <coughs> so we have this. Uh, we have this line configuration. Okay? The question now is what is the positive sequence impedance? What is Z1? Okay? So either you apply this equation here. Okay, or, or you solve for Zs. Then you solve for Zm, and then the positive sequence impedance is Zs minus Zm. Okay, so um, we do not have the solution using this enough. I think you could just, just, you could just check that at home. Let us try to solve it using this way. Z1 is equal to Zs minus Zm. Okay, so how do we get Zs? Um, Zs, again, it's the average of all the diagonal elements. So let us go back to the result that we got for the same thing. Ano? I'm just backtracking here. Um, I think you could see them simultaneously. Uh, this is the result that we got. Okay. So these are the three diagonal elements. Okay. So if you get the average of the three diagonal elements, you get the same thing because they're all equal naman eh. So the average, their average is equal to the same thing. However, for the off-diagonals, okay, 
So for the off diagonals, you have this thing here, you have that thing, and you have th that thing. If you get the average of the three, then that is your ZM. Okay? So you get the average of the three. That is your uh, ZM. Uh, where are we? Uh -huh. Wait lang, folks. I think I'm, I'm, I'm still down here. There. You get the average of the three. And that's our uh, ZM. Okay? And then once we have ZM, uh, the positive sequence impedance is just ZS minus ZM. So this thing here minus that thing, that is our positive sequence impedance. It's seven that's the single R and the single X uh, that we know, uh, that, that we use in the load flow. Okay? Any questions, guys? Okay. Sige. I think there's another, uh, let, let's see if there's an, an example here. Uh, at the end, there's another example. I, I'll, I'll just go back to that. Ano? Um, now, how about this one? Okay, how about this thing here? How do we get the positive sequence impedance? Okay, uh, again, we just have to solve for the three by three matrix. Okay. So ito na yung 3 by 3 matrix natin. Okay? How do we get the uh, positive sequence impedance of that line? So that's the 3 by 3 matrix. Okay? Solve for ZS. ZS, again, is just the average of this 3. Okay? Oh, no, no, no. Sorry. Hindi yan yung sagot natin. Yung sagot natin pala ito. Okay? Okay? So this is the answer for, the, for that cable with the ground wire. So you get the average of these three values here. Take note ano, that diagonal elements are no longer equal because we already have a ground wire. Okay? You get the average of those three, that's ZS. You get the average of these three, that's ZM. And then the positive sequence impedance is just equal to ZS minus ZM. Okay? <coughs> Any questions? Okay. Okay lang kayo dyan, ha? Paramdam kayo. Okay, if, if mukhang medyo magulo na. Okay, now, uh, moving on, uh, what if there are bundled conductors? So what do I mean bundled? Okay, this is an example of a bundled conductor. Okay, so, so instead of having one conductor, we have two conductors that are in parallel. So this is A and this is A prime, and both are in phase A. And then we have two conductors for phase B, and then we have two conductors for phase C. Okay? So how are we going to modify the computations if we have bundled conductors? Well, the, the, the solution to that is we will just um, compute for the effective GMR of the bundled conductor. And then we will use the same expression. Okay? For Z. For, ano, for, for Z1 or for ZAA, okay? So, how do we get the effective GMR of the bundled conductor? Well, if we have a two-strand bundle, ano yung hilig sabi ng two-strand bundle? This is two-strand bundle, okay? Then, the, effect, the GMR of this is effectively equal to DS, the GMR of one conductor, multiplied by the separation between the two conductors in the bundle. And then you just get the square root, okay? In fact, we have an, ex an example here, okay? So here, we have, um, we are to find the positive sequence reactants. Uh, the separation between the bundle is 0.4 meters, okay? The separation is 0.4 meters. The GMR is 0.0014, okay? And then the separation between phase A and phase B is 10 meters. So we are measuring the separation from the midpoint of the bundle. Okay? Uh, the separation between phase B and phase C is also 10 meters. It means that the separation from phase A to phase C is 20 meters. Okay? So let us solve for the positive sequence reactance of the lines. Uh, the expression that we will use for the positive sequence reactance is this thing here. Okay? 
So we already have the J omega KS. Okay, S is the length of the line. Okay, this is in ohms. Okay, and na yung total length ng line. It's not in ohms per kilometer. Okay, so this is the total length. Omega K, and then multiply it by the total length of the line. LN of the GMD, the geometric mean distance between the uh, or among the three cables, divided divided by the GMR, effective GMR. Okay, so let us now apply that equation. Okay, so the GMR is sorry, the GMR is um, oops, may napipindot ako. Uh, the GMR of one conductor is 0.114 meter. Okay, the GMR of the bundle is equal to the square root of the GMR of one cable multiplied by the separation 0.4, which is that thing. Okay, or 0 0.0676 meters. That's the effective GMR of this bundle here. Therefore, the reactance is equal to omega KS. This is omega K. In 0 0.0754 ohms per kilometer. Again, that's a constant. Okay. And then the line is 200 kilometers long. Okay. It's 200 kilometers long from the previous example. So that's the total length, 200 kilometers. Ln of the GMD divided by the GMR. Okay. The GMD, so where did you get the 12.6? Well, it's equal to the geometric mean distance. Uh, among the three. So it's equal to 10 times 10 times 20. And then we get the cube root of that. Okay. Uh, I think it's best to show you this figure here. Uh, nasa yung figure natin? Meron tayo dito. Ito. Okay. So the GMR is equal to the cube root of those three distances. So this is uh, D12, D23, D31. The GMR is just the cube root of the three. If the cables are arranged that way, then you just have to solve for these distances here. You use the same formula to get the GMD. If you have bundled conductors, same thing. Okay, that's D12, D23, and then D13, and then the, GM, the GMD, the geometric mean distance is still equal to that expression. Okay, guys? Questions? Okay. Now, um, how about how about the capacitance? Okay, I'm moving on to the next uh, slide. No, parang abilis natin, no? Pero I'm trying to finish here by ano, eh, by seven sana. Kaya lang wala talaga hindi tayo matatapos ng seven. Okay. Anyway, I, I I'll just uh, breeze through the slides uh, for the capacitance. For the capacitance. Uh, we also we are also solving for a three by three matrix. Again, uh, I'm I'm skipping the derivations here. Uh, we will not go through that. We do not have the luxury of time. Okay. So what we need to do, uh, I'll just use this one. For the capacitance, okay. <clears throat> um, for the shunt capacitance, we need to build this matrix here. Uh, our ultimate goal is to solve for that P matrix. And that P matrix is the relationship between the voltage of each conductor to ground. And Q is the charge that is contained in each conductor. Okay, So see here that we have an expression that relates the voltage to the charge. Okay, However, this term here is not capacitance. Kasi ang alam natin, Q, charge, is equal to capacitance volt. However, this expression here is voltage equal to a value multiplied by charge. Therefore, it means that this matrix here is the inverse of the capacitance matrix. Okay? So once we have built that P matrix, we will just invert that to get the capacitance matrix. Okay, guys? So the next question is, how do we build the P matrix? So again, yung mechanics nito is similar lang katulad dun sa 3 by 3 impedance matrix. We have diagonal elements, okay? And the diagonal elements, we use this expression. 
And then for the off-diagonal elements, we use that expression, okay? So the common terms is one over two pi epsilon, where epsilon is the permittivity of free space. That epsilon is that 8.854 times 10 to the negative 12 farads per meter. It's a constant that, that all of us know, okay? Now, uh, on the LN, <clears throat> you have an HKK, RK, and then a, D, a HKJ and DKJ, okay? So first, let us focus muna on the, uh, on the diagonal elements. So for the diagonal elements, you have 1 over 2 pi epsilon ln HKK over RKK. So what's that HKK? It's just a distance, okay? So if these are the three conductors, a conductor A, B, and C, and then let's say that that is your ground conductor, <coughs> okay? That's your ground conductor. HKK is the distance from, from cable K to its mirror image with respect to ground. So this line here is lupa, ground. So this is the conductors. These are the conductors. This is the ground, the lupa, and this is the mirror image. So we have mirror conductors that are below ground, okay? So if this is conductor A, this is the mirror image of conductor A with respect to ground. And this distance here is HAA, okay? If this is conductor B, this is the mirror image of conductor B. And the distance here from this conductor to that mirror image, that's your HBB. Similarly, this is HCC. And if this is W, that is the mirror image of W, this is HWW, okay? So all of these things here are distances. And if we have H, it means that we are getting the distance of a conductor above ground from a conductor below ground or from a mirror image, okay? Now, going back to this expression, we have an HKK over RK. What is RK? Well, RK is the radius of the conductor, okay? So you have to go back to the spec sheet of the conductor and then solve, and then look for the radius. Parang yung kanina, okay? Dun sa conductor natin, nakita na natin kung ano yung radius niya. So you just have to use that value. Uh, just be careful that if you are using here, uh, if this is in meters, then RK should also be in meters. If that is in feet, that should also be in feet. Okay? Make sure that the units are compatible. Okay? <coughs> so at this point, we already have the diagonal elements. How about the off-diagonal elements? So for, off, for the off-diagonals, this one, we still have the 1 over 2 pi epsilon. Okay? So for the off-diagonals, we still have the 1 over 2 pi epsilon. Ln HKJ over DKJ. HKJ, for example, um, if we are solving for PAB, this one, this thing here, it's equal, PAB is equal to 1 over 2 pi epsilon. Ln HAB over DAB. And HAB is the distance from conductor A to the mirror image of conductor B. So this distance here, that's your HAB, okay? And then DAB is the distance from conductor A to conductor B above ground. Nasundan ba guys? Okay? So for example, if you're solving for PAC here, okay, for PAC, then what you need is HAC over DAC. And HAC is equal to this distance, okay? from conductor A to the mirror image of conductor C. But DAC is this distance here, the distance from conductor A to conductor C. Okay, so you just have to uh, fill it up. And once you have the, all, the, all the elements of the matrix, then you just have to invert that matrix, okay? And that's your capacitance matrix. Now, if you do not have a ground wire, if you do not have a ground wire, let's say you only have A, B, and C, imagine you don't have this, huh? and you don't have that. Then you already have a three by three capacitance matrix, okay? However, if you have a ground wire like this one, then this P matrix is four by four, 
Ayan na naman tayo. What we are after is a 3 by 3 matrix. But what we have constructed here is a 4 by 4 matrix. How do we eliminate the fourth row and the fourth column? Well, we just have to perform cron reduction again. Okay? So, so let's say that we have four conductors here. So we already have a 4 by 4 matrix here. We have VA, VB, VC, and VW. QA, QB, QC, and QW. But we know that this voltage here, VW, is equal to zero. Okay? That's the voltage of the ground wire with respect to ground. Therefore, it's zero. It's a ground wire. Its voltage with respect to ground is zero. So this thing here is zero. It means that we can eliminate the fourth row and the fourth column using Cron reduction. And we are down with the three by three impedance matrix, or sorry, admittance matrix rather, okay? Now, as soon as we already have that, that capacitance matrix, wait, before I move there, eh, hanap tayo ng example, baka may example dito. Uh, sayang, wala siyang example. Let's see. Let's see, somewhere at the bottom, this one. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Let's apply that, that formula. Okay. So we have here, um, three cables, A, B, and C, a flat horizontal configuration uh, between A and B, you have five meters. Between B and C, you have five meters. It means that from A and C, you have 10 meters. Okay. And then the three cables are 15 meters above the ground. It means that uh, the mirror image of A is somewhere here. Hence, the distance of A from its mirror image is 30 meters. Diba? The distance of B from its mirror image is also 30 meters. And then from C, of C from its mirror image is also 30 meters. Okay? So just remember this. Ano? When we are using H, it means that it's a distance of an above ground conductor to a mirror image conductor. Okay? Now the cables, they are uniform with radius 0 0.0109 meters. Okay? Therefore, HAA and HBB and HCC are 30 meters. How about HAB and HBC? Nasan si HAB? It's the distance from A to the mirror image of B. So it's somewhere here. And we can compute for, this, for that distance using the Pythagorean theorem. It's just equal to 5 squared plus 30 squared and get the square root of that. So this distance here is 30.414 meters. And that's also the distance here. And that's also the distance here from B to the mirror image of A. And that's also the distance of B from the mirror image of C. Okay, guys? Okay? So, PAA is equal to PBB, equal to PCC. It's 1 over 2 pi epsilon, LNN, LN of HAA over RA. Pasok lang natin tong <coughs> HAA na to, this one, divided by the radius, get the LN, and then we have uh, the diagonal elements. 142.37 times 10 to the 9 meters per farad. Okay, that's meters per farad. Now, how about the off-diagonal elements? So again, we will use this formula. Okay? So if we want to get this, then it's 1 over 2 pi epsilon ln of HAB over DAB. Okay, so going back to the slides, PAB is equal to 1 over 2 pi epsilon ln of HAB, which is the 30.14, 30.14 divided by DAB. And DAB is 5. Okay? So the answer is 32.454 times 10 to the 9 meters per farad. Okay? That's PAB and PBC. How about PAC? So for PAC, again, we will use the same formula. We still have that constant. LN of HAC over DAC. So what's HAC? It's the distance from A to the mirror image of C. Okay, so I'm sure you can solve for that distance. That's 31.623 meters. Okay, so the distance here is 30. From here to here, it's 30. And then the horizontal distance is 10 meters. Okay, so the diagonal is 31.623 meters. 
Okay? And the answer for uh, PAC is 20.695 times 10 to the 9 meters per farad. So this is now our P matrix. The capacitance matrix is just the inverse of that. Okay? Now, take note, we are not interested with the capacitance matrix. We are interested on the positive sequence capacitance. Okay? And the positive sequence capacitance, uh, the formula is given here. The positive sequence capacitance is just equal to, it's C1 equal to CS0 plus CM0. Okay, so what's CS0, what's CM0? I hope you still remember what we're doing kanina, no? Okay. Get the average of the diagonal elements, that's the CS. Get the um, get the average of the off-diagonal elements, that's the CM. Okay. So here, if you get the dia the if you get the average of these three numbers here, that's the 7.562. Equal na yan. If you get the average of these three numbers here, that's the CM. Okay. And the positive sequence capacitance is equal to CS plus CM. Okay. So take note that in our formula, uh, CM here is uh, a negative number. Uh, CM is a negative number. So may minus doon. Okay? Uh, so you have to uh, get... So the CM is not negative 1.5... Sorry. The CM is not negative 1.271. The CM is 1.271 without the negative sign. Okay? So 7.562 plus 1.271 times 10 to the negative 12 farads per meter or 8.83 picofarads per meter. That's the positive sequence capacitance. So going back to your um, MP, I, I give you the, the series resistance, the series reactance, and I'm also giving you the B, the charging uh, reactance. This is how you get the charging reactance. You multiply this by omega by 2 pi times the frequency. That's the B that we already know. Okay, guys? Any questions? Okay. Um, take note, class, that, that in this computation for the capacitance, we are actually um, considering the effect of the ground, of the lupa of Earth on the capacitance. If you want to ignore the effect of the ground, then there is another formula that we can use, this one, okay? It's equal to 2 pi epsilon sub zero over ln of the geometric mean distance over the radius, okay? So let's apply that. So it's 2 pi times epsilon over ln of the GMD over the radius. That 6.3 is the GMD of the three conductors. It's equal to the cube root of five times five times 10, okay? The cube root of 5 times 5 times 10 is 6.3. R is the radius of the conductor. Okay? So if we apply that formula, the capacitance is 8.748 picofarads per meter. Because we are assuming that that lupa is not existing. However, if we assume that uh, if we want to consider the effect of that lupa of the ground, then we have an additional a small additional capacitance. Okay, so take note of the difference. Ito 0.8.748, ito 8.833, so it's around 0.1 picofarad per meter. So hindi rin siya ganun ka negligible. Okay, guys? Okay? So at this point, um, I think the only way to, to conclude is to, yan, to give you an example or, or to, to so summarize the expressions, okay? So for the inductance, it's uh, two times 10 to the negative seven ln over, uh, of GMD over GMR, Henry's per meter. Uh, you may be wondering why, how come that's two times 10 to the negative seven, you know? Uh, take note that that is only the K. We do not have the omega yet. Yung ginagamit natin is omega K, okay? Omega K. But here, 
um, it's just the inductance. So we do not have the omega. If we have the omega there, then that's the 0 0.075, uh, the constant that we were using kanina. Okay. For the capacitance, it's 2 pi epsilon over Lm GMB over R. Okay. So at this point, uh, what we already know is how do we solve for the R, the X, and the capacitance. Okay. In fact, um, ito. Okay. So, so in, our, in your MP, I'm giving you these values, yung R na yan, yung X na yan. Yun lang yung solve natin. And then you have the admittance, okay? You have the admittance. You can solve for that admittance using this expression and that expression, okay? Now, to finally conclude this evening, um, um, I just have, uh, I just want to give you the, the equivalent circuit of the transmission and distribution lines. And that is depending on the length of the line, okay? So if you have a transmission line that is shorter than 80 kilometers, okay, which is very common here in the Philippines, parang wala tayong transmission line talaga na mahaba more than 80 kilometers, ano? then the model that you will use is just a series R and X only. Okay? It means that you do not have to worry about the capacitance. Okay? You just have to solve for the R and the X if that transmission line is less than 80 kilometers long. Okay, so you just have to, um, you just have to, nasa na ba yung formula natin? Uh, I can find it anyway. Yan. Yan. You just have to use this. Okay? That's, that's the positive sequence resistance. That's the positive sequence impedance. If the line is less than 80 kilometers long, then you just have to use this as a model for as a model for our transmission line, okay? However, if the line is, yeah, however, if the line is more than, longer than 80 kilometers, but shorter than 240 kilometers, okay? I don't know if we have a transmission line here in the Philippines or not that is shorter than or longer than 240 kilometers, okay? That's the only time that you have to include the shunt reactance, okay? Now, how do you compute the shunt reactance? You use this expression, okay? Use that expression. You solve for the total capacitance over the entire length, and then you multiply by omega, or two pi times the frequency, that's your B. And then once you get B, I hope you still remember this, ano sa MP, you put half of that at the sending end, and then you put half of that at the receiving end. Okay, that's the reason why we are doing the pi model. Okay, so you get the total capacitance, half of that will go here, the other half will go here. And then for the, for the series impedance, you put it there. Okay. Any questions, guys? Any questions? So overtime na naman tayo. Target ko 7 o'clock. But it's now uh, almost 7.30. Okay. To wrap everything up, um, again, um, I, 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 I uploaded at the UVLE. This, uh, uh, this is uh, a summary of all the equations. Okay. And then please go through the slides that I uploaded. Para, kasi maraming examples doon. Okay, and then you, you could just return, you could just review the examples that, that we are, uh, that, 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 that we have went through. And then for the assessment, ang gagawin ko lang is I'll, I'll give you a line configuration. Uh, maybe, hindi ganito kasimple, ano? kasi ito, yung line natin, naka-flat horizontal spacing. So maybe uh, one conductor is somewhere here. Okay, so uh, in a way, it's, it's just a, uh, uh, some geometry. Okay, you just have to solve for, you know, you just have to solve for distances lang naman. Okay? Questions? Anyone? Questions? Okay, so medyo mabilis yung lecture natin, ano, but, but again, uh, hindi ko naman talaga intend to give a lecture. I just want to, 
to 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 go through the most important equations here in the in the summary and then give uh, some examples on how to use them and again uh uh wag niyo nang masyadong problemahin yung derivation ang importante is we know how to apply the formula we know how to perform colon reduction um you already have octave and matlab matlabs so you should be able to use a matlab to perform the cron reduction if needed uh, again if i ask you if you, i will be asking you to do this i don't expect you to do this by hand you already have matlab with you so you just use matlab okay any questions anyone are you still with me um uh, So December, okay, may nagtanong about the deadlines of our MPs. Uh, huh. <clears throat> Ganito na lang. Um, all of the requirements, all of the requirements are due next year na. Okay? It would be better kung masubmit nyo lahat by December 18. Okay? Para at least wala na kayong gagawin over the break. However, um, yeah. Um, however, because na move yung deadline ng mga grades, I'm going to move all deadlines. Okay, so if you could still submit uh, everything in time, then that that's good because uh, it means that you will enjoy your Christmas. However, kung hindi naman kaya, then I will give. So um, I will I will extend all deadlines up to next year. Okay. So anyway, um, just ano, just uh, bantayan nyo lang tung. Oh wait, I uh, I think I'll just end the recording. Okay.